um an update on ethereum etfs that's the uh this is something that i would think is important to discuss uh because as you know recently uh in a, we have an ethereum etf being launched in hong kong right so this is what i discussed today we know what did uh after this launching what's going to happen next you know what are the expectations everyone is looking at All right so as mentioned earlier hong kong recently launched the asia's first spot ethereum exchange traded fund and etf a significant milestone in its ambition to become a regional crypto hub now the singapore has taken over as the financial hub of the asian region so hong kong is trying its best to be the regional crypto hub now this debut was part of a broader release that included a total of three spot ethereum and three spot bitcoin etfs the launch was perceived as a litmus test for future ethereum etf initiatives globally so that's why we had a lot of uh, this uh what do you call uh social medias uh, talking about it very much they want to equate you know if it's successful if they have a successful launch in hong kong that will uh encourage the the u.s uh, applicants to to you know strive and fight hard to get the u.s version of the ethereum etf so they were numbers were thrown around uh to you know what kind of uh volumes that we're looking at what kind of uh, first day uh, inflows that we're looking at uh, expected and then that will be you know equate to something really really good and you know that feel good factor they were looking you know social media was uh was everywhere in the social media so despite the high expectations the initial trading volume was modest with ethereum trading around 3 million on the first day now uh, so James Seifert, an ETF research analyst at Bloomberg, pointed out that the U.S. often boosts initial volumes by arranging seed capital and additional funds to flow in immediately after launch, a strategy not employed in Hong Kong, unf uh, unfortunately. So, so, you know, people think that oh, this is low, you know, that's not a good thing. But if you look into it, it's just a different style of running things. Now, uh, like the U.S. one, right? What happened was that, you know, if you had, like, say, BlackRock, they had a lot of funds coming in, right? What they usually do is that they will take some and put it as seed fund, you know, put it in the ETF first, pre, before launch, but they will always keep some during launch. So during launch, they want to have that kind of feeling that, yes, my, um, there's more... Uh, volume coming in is just to show you know to keep the the rest you know, they're sitting on the sidelines looking at it said wow there's really strong volume let's just join and start buying it before anyone else does you know that kind of thing so this is the u.s star but unfortunately in hong kong it's a bit different uh they they took all the uh you know whatever is the seed fund they just put it inside ready and that's one of the costs why you see such low volume but anyway, if you look into the overall thing, right, you will see that the uh, China AMC Ethereum ETF saw a substantial inflow of 20 million. And the total inflow of all Ethereum ETFs on its first day uh, is 43 million, a respectable figure by Hong Kong standard. Okay. So that's why I made mention one thing. We cannot compare Hong Kong to U.S. The size is different. U.S. is the largest in the whole world. So that's why uh, Seifat, right noted that it's difficult to directly compare U.S. and Hong Kong's ETF launches due to differing market dynamics relative to the local market. However, the launch he deemed was successful. Okay? To him is successful now despite this lower than anticipated volumes led to negative media coverage we saw that in social media and then even the in the the normal medias they were talking about it as well so that not so nice feeling country i believe contributed to the significant drop in the cryptocurrency market with bitcoin and ethereum losing eight thousand 
and 430 uh, US dollars respectively over two days. Now, however, you know, we are not here to press the panic button. I mean, if you have been trading uh, and investing in cryptocurrency for so long, you know that this is pretty normal. So if you take a step back, the Hong Kong's ETF market is small compared to the US market, really. And the total ETF assets is around 40 billion. Now, some of the US ETF is larger than all the ETFs combined in Hong Kong. That's to give you an idea how 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 crazy it is. But if you look into it, if the the um you know yeah overall I do think that it's doing quite well. Now if you look into the the uh the recent launch of the Ethereum as well, the Bitcoin, right? You also need to know one thing, right? Uh the ETFs that is launched the, the Ethereum ones and the, the, the Bitcoins uh, is not accessible to investors outside Hong Kong unless they qualify under specific investment criteria. And mainland Chinese investors are notably excluded from participating. So the rules is very simple. You need to be, uh, need, this needs to be trading in Hong Kong at least for six months before the Chinese um as you know, they will co to consider whether they allow the Chinese to come in or not, the mainland Chinese to come in. So, so that is also one of those factors that says that you know, the reason contributing reason why, uh, the volume is so low as well. But think six months from now, if the the Chinese, the mainland Chinese, are interested and they start coming in, that could change the whole thing. So anyway, uh, just like the U.S. counterpart, right? The upcoming two weeks are crucial for assessing the ETF's popularity. And uh, if you have like net inflows every single day and then getting more and more, then that could be a positive thing because uh, like uh, yesterday there were news uh, coming out saying that, you know, GBTC, you know, since the in inception of the the grayscale Bitcoin ETF, every single day you had negative, you know, you had outflows coming in from the, the grayscale Bitcoin ETF. And uh, either yesterday or the day before, for the first time, they had a positive inflow. So that is a good thing. So if you were to have that plus uh, this Hong Kong coming in and more and more ETFs coming in, uh, this demand could actually start, you know, to trickle and I don't know, maybe turn into some avalanche of of demand in in Bitcoin ETF, right? So, meanwhile, meanwhile, the likelihood of an Ethereum ETF launching in the US this year remains slim, amidst ongoing legal debates over the classifications of cryptocurrencies. Now, the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, or in short form, the SAC, largely views cryptocurrencies as securities, with Bitcoin being a notable exception. That's that's the only one. Now, if you look into detail, and especially uh, with regards to Ethereum, right, this classification debate has intensified with Ethereum's shift from proof of work to proof of stake, right? And uh, when you do that, because what happens is here, when you they, the shift happened from proof of work to proof of stake, it raised questions about its decentralization. That it was the key point of all cryptocurrencies. Decentralized. It's not something centralized. So everybody, uh, eat, it's more or less fair and there's no central control. But to be part of this, uh, to like, to, to, to vote, to make decisions, be part of the decision making team, it required for Ethereum if the requirement of staking thirty two ETHs to become a validator is seen as a significant barrier because not many people has thirty two ETHs, suggesting that Ethereum may not be as decentralized as perceived because there are some who holds more Ethereum, but so that particular group or person may hold a bigger say in in whatever is the direction that they want yeah, Ethereum to be. Nevertheless, right? Nevertheless, an important person mentioned something I think it is also important to bring it out. 
Y'all, I think y'all know who Larry Fink is. He's the CEO of BlackRock. He remains optimistic about the prospects of an Ethereum ETF. Even it were classified as a securities by the SEC. So this is something crucial. Uh, just to let everyone know, there is eight pending filings for a spot Ethereum ETF, including one from BlackRock. Uh, and that's a continued push to integrate Ethereum into regulated financial products. I do take in uh, into consideration, BlackRock has a track record for getting what it wants. We have seen that with Bitcoin already. The moment they came in, you know, um, everything just passed through easily. And uh, we had the first ever uh, Bitcoin ETF. So that kind of situation can actually happen with the Ethereum as well. So let's uh, cross fingers. But nevertheless, I do not expect it to happen this week, uh, this year, sorry. So uh, be a bit patient, but it's a good, how would I want to, how would I put it? I think it's a good timing as well. Um, because if you look at the relationship of uh, uh, this Ethereum uh, in terms of all, altcoins right when do usually the altcoins start to uh move into the altcoin season is um usually uh at the tail end almost nearing the tail end of the bitcoin upwards movement now uh based on historical data that we have the eight months to 15 months right after the uh halving that's when uh, Bitcoin will find, you know, usually peak around that period of time. So if you look at the the timing, I said next year, so like eight months from another seven months from now, there will be the eight month cycle. So that will bring us to December. And if it moves into uh, more than eight months, that means it will be 2025. That's when you expect the overall movements of ETH to uh, the altcoins start to move. So if the uh, SEC were to approve uh, Ethereum ETF during that time, that could be the catalyst for the all the alts, you know, to the, uh, the, the boom of the alt season coming in during that time. Okay, so let's uh, cross our fingers that this could happen for those that are look, uh, really trading and investing in Ethereum. So with that... That's the report for today uh, for the fundamentals. Let's move on to the charts next.